So I'm using the 511 impregnator sealer. Uh, this is the one that was most most uh, suggested in all the YouTube videos <laughs> that I watched. Uh, I'm also going to be using a new brush. Um, this is going to go on multiple coats, I think probably three. And uh, we'll look at it from there. But a brush on applicator for this I think is going to be just fine. The top coat might be a little different. So this is the first coat of the base sealer while well, it's still a little bit wet and uh, it really really pops the I don't know kind of the interesting thing I, I found the best way to put it on is to brush it on kind of thick so that it gets um, it gets into all the little nooks and crannies um, and what happens then is it leaves a bunch of little bubbles and then I go back with a clean cloth and buff it out in large sweeping circles so as not to leave any kind of brush marks. Um, I'll add another coat after this one is completely dry, uh, I guess a couple hours again, and uh, we'll go from there. The first seal coat has dried sufficiently to put on a second coat. Right. So we will see what that looks like afterwards. And this is the third and final coat of the sealer. You can see it's already starting to dry. The, um, that last coat goes on really, really thin, mostly because it's already sealed the concrete. So this now has to sit for 24 to 72 hours to let it cure. So I'm going to do that. Now I do have another top coat to put on, which is a different product, but we're going to see how that goes after this is completely hard and ready to accept the next layer. So prior to the final sealing coat, I just hit this with uh, 320 grit sandpaper and wiped it down with some denatured alcohol to remove any oil and grease that is on here. I'm going to let this dry because I don't have the right rollers to put on the top coat. What I'm going to be using is this XS327. This is a two-part uh, curing top coat that is food safe. Uh, it goes on in minimum of three layers. The first layer is a priming layer and then there are two more layers on top of it. This has to be mixed uh, pretty precisely so <laughs> I'm probably going to get some other mixing stuff too. Oh hi. <laughs> I'm about to uh, start with the sealer. Uh, this is a two-part sealer, the XS327. And first coat of this, the base coat, is done slightly different than the rest of them. So it is three parts of part A to two parts of part B. Once that's mixed, then I add seven times the total of water. Uh, that's going to make it very, very um, runny. Now that's for putting it on bare concrete, so I think I'm going to do it a little bit thicker than that because this isn't bare concrete. Um, and I'm going to give it a fairly good prime coat, but I am going to do it thinner than the normal mix, which is just the uh, 3 to 2 mixture. So alright. Oh, I got a uh, paint mixer. I have two brushes, one of them for applying and one of them for rolling afterwards. So we got one wet and one dry. A uh, couple of small cups, bigger cup, mixing cups, and denatured alcohol for cleaning. From the documentation, it says that the working time of this is about 30 minutes. This has these fun clamps on it. 
Hey. And I have my handy dandy measuring cups here. Uh, this one is half a cup, and this is a third of a cup. That works out to a three to two ratio, which I thought was kind of neat. actually works pretty neat. Adding 600 milliliters of water, so it's a 4 to 1 mix, not the 7 to 1 that it was calling for initially. And we'll start. The idea is to just keep it wet, let it soak into the surface as much as possible, and add more as you go. Alright, this is the base coat after it is, well, it's almost dry to the touch. I got some dog hair in there. Um, you can see there's these little streak lines in there. Um, those came with the foam roller. Now, I do like the shininess of it, but I'm going to let this dry for a little bit more and then put on the first real coat. But yeah, I think that's going to turn out okay. All right, same setup as before. Uh, this is now dry to the touch, so it's ready to go for the next coat. Uh, this is called the first coat. The first one is called the prime coat. So it's a little confusing, but uh, otherwise, you know, it's not all that bad. Uh, mix is a little different on this one. Um, with this one, they want two parts water to one part of the mixture. So we're going to be Mixing this as well. It's the part A. Now the part B, which is very syrupy looking. It's very thick. It's almost like corn syrup. This is probably going to be way more than I need 
to cover the surface, um, but I don't have smaller containers to do the mixing. And I suppose I could just do smaller batches in either of these. This is oddly satisfying. Added the water to it. The cleanup on this is really pretty nice um, with some denatured alcohol. It seems to take care of just about everything. Okay, I am going to let this sit for about 10 minutes and I'm going to wipe off the counter to get any dust or any of these little marks and stuff off. You can see the surface and all the little white streaks and everything. Those, as it dries, will disappear. It is really starting to uh, come together nicely. Uh, this is a uh, little piece of dust in there, crap. Uh, this is still tacky to the touch. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then come back, give it a sanding tomorrow with some 320 grit before I put on the uh, the second coat. And then we'll see how many more coats after that. But this is really starting to look nice. So this is more than 12 hours in. And that feels good. I like the ceiling on this. So I'm going to sand this with a 320 grit and then put another coat on and go from there. Okay, that's after the sanding and a quick wipe down with some denatured alcohol. I think the surface is smoothed out a little bit. I'll lay down another coat and we'll see how it goes. The technique for putting on this top coat, as I've found out so far, <coughs> The best is to go slowly, try to maintain a leading edge of a little bit of goop there, try and keep that consistent. But if you go slowly, you don't raise up so many bubbles. And it leaves a nicer finish. I have a little bit too much on here, so I'm going to have to spread it out a little bit more. After playing around with that one corner a little bit, I decided to go and hit the whole surface with some 600 grit sandpaper. Uh, and then I rinsed that off with, or wiped it down with some isopropyl alcohol. Went over the whole thing with 1500 grit, which is a mirror finish. That's normally used for automotive finishes. And then uh, I am now going to, I've put on the polishing compound, scribbled on, and I'm going to hit it with the polisher and see what that does.
I wish you could feel the surface. It feels amazing. It's super smooth. I can feel no imperfections in the surface at all. But as I look, I can see them. And I can see them even just looking straight down. I think I may I think I may sand this and do another coat this time trying it with spray. See how that works. After the second coat has fully dried and cured, well it's dried anyway I think it might need a little bit more time to cure, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like coming around the corner. not bad. There are some slight imperfections <coughs> along here and a couple of other places but overall the surface is nice and clear. It's hard. It's waterproof. I think I'm going to call this one finished. I may try and polish up this piece over here and just see what happens. I mean, I've got the polishing kit. I might as well try. Fifteen hundred grit. I could do one more sanding and try a spray-on coat and see if that does any better than the roll-on, but I don't know. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it makes a difference. I mean, the, the finish feels really smooth. It's kind of amazing how, how nice it feels. Uh, maybe I should try, I mean, I've got some I've got some furniture wax I could try. See if that does anything. Uh, man, it's so close. I I want to be done, but I want it to be done right. Hmm. I gotta think about this. <laughs> um, I have taped off and masked more along here. I ended up not being very happy with <clears throat> the roll-on finish from before and as a good friend of mine once said if you don't have time to do it right when are you going to have time to do it over? So right now I have the time everything is off and I am going to try a slightly different technique. I have this HVLP spray gun. <clears throat> This is not a top of the line unit by any means, but it should be enough to get me to do a spray coating on this whole countertop. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, there are many things that could go wrong with it, but the instructions on the top coat do say that it is sprayable. So I am going to try this and see what happens. If it doesn't work, I can always sand it down and go back to the roll-on coat. As you could probably tell, the uh, first coat that I put on was <laughs> way too thick. I had the adjustments wrong on the uh, spray bottle, so I pretty much wiped it down and just left a really thin layer. So I am going to try and put on another layer and see if I can get it to go on nicely without too much um, bubbling and just pooling and puddling.
Okay, that is uh, the second coat down, and I turned the lights off. I turned the lights off because I kept blowing the circuit breaker. Um, it looks like it's a little bit pebbled. But if it dries that way, and it dries that fine, I think I'm going to say good enough. Uh, let's see what it does over here, because there's some little spotty things there. spotty bits up there, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, all right, that's enough for the day. I'll see what it looks like tomorrow morning. All right, this is the last day. I am pretty sure the surface texture is this sort of pebbly texture, but it's continuous. It's not at all offensive in my opinion. And there are, I mean, there are some little idiosyncrasies in there if you want to get into it. But overall, I think that this is good to go. You see over here, there's a little bit more of the sort of tiger striping <laughs> going through the layers. And then of course over here, and more of the same. Yeah, it's not perfect. Then again, I'm not perfect either. But uh, this is definitely shinier than I am. Now, it's time for the cleanup. I'm probably not going to show that on camera. I mean, if you don't know what it looks like taking tape off and throwing stuff away, uh, you should probably, there's probably a YouTube video out there for it. Uh, And here is kind of post cleanup. I uh, got all the crap off the walls and did some painting and replaced the outlet covers with the stainless steel ones. Um, I'm going to be doing a backsplash. I also am going to be caulking these corners. So that's still stuff that's on the list to do. And of course, you know, I need to put the sink and everything back in. But this is essentially done. Now the floor, I'm going to do a scrub and a mop and a vacuum. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, Sissy has found this as a really good dog place. I am going to replace this crappy light fixture with an LED one. And do a little bit more from there. But uh, that's going to do it for this episode. There will be more to come.